Hello, this is Daniel Ritchie, developer of Project Dog Waffle Howler 9. And in this demo, I'm going to be showing some rotoscoping and green screen compositing tools. Uh, these are useful for uh, compositing uh, live action over uh, either still plates or animation. Um, as you see here, the rotoscoping tools live in the curve tool. And I've selected a, uh, the curve tool and I'm beginning to uh, create a curve around these, uh, these parts in the shot that are uh, not very useful. Uh, you got some, uh, some cameras and some uh, lights and things or uh, some kind of equipment and, and part of the wall in there and some other, other things hanging in the shot. Um, I turned that into a, uh, a polygon tool with uh, straight edges instead of a curve because I thought it would be easier to use in this particular case. Um, and I also made it a, clo a closed shape, closed shape, um, which will let me fill that in. There's a, a fill button that you see right there, and I'm just using that same green color that I picked up off the screen using the the color picker tool uh, to fill this in. Um, we can also apply these to an animation, which we'll do it a, um, shortly. Uh, but here I'm just showing how you can uh, use this curl tool to uh, isolate parts of an image in uh, what we used to call a garbage mat because you would uh, you take chunk out of the shot like the cameras and garbage you don't want in there um, and replace it with more useful things like green <laughs> which can be later uh, composited out of the shot um, and right here I'm going to show uh, under the uh, filters menu, filters and animated, there is a uh, item called uh, fill selection, which will not only fill the current uh, shape on the current frame, but it will fill all of the uh, all the frames with this uh, this shape you've created. And you can uh, you can actually animate this shape, so you can use it to make animated garbage mats. You can use it to do rotoscoping, which is um, the same idea. You can use it to, uh, for example, um, if this man were walking, you could use it to uh, mat out the uh, the ground that he's standing on because there's no green screen on the ground. You can actually create your own mat for that using the rotoscoping tools, uh, which is what we're doing here basically. We still have that uh, that shape tool, that curve tool selected, which is in, still in polygon mode. Uh, we will momentarily switch that back into a curve tool, but it is a little easier to work in, I think, sometimes. Uh, when it's in a polygon mode like this, uh, we've zoomed in so you can uh, work a little more closely with the, what you're looking at. I have to be careful. Um, if you click too close to a point, that will select the point you're on instead of creating a new point. And as you see here, we're just adding these points. Uh, if this man were walking around, his foot might change from straight on to a side view. You might want to add more points in that case, uh, because once you started animating this, uh, you cannot add new points to it, so you might want to add extra points just in that particular case um, okay I've just turned on the uh, the curve tool <laughs> the uh, is now a smooth curve or a uh, not a cubic curve but a, uh, a cat catmo rom curve um, that we're using now instead of that polygon mode this will give a little smoother result and one important thing with rotoscoping is not to get overly caught up in the details because when you're animating that they're just gonna look really rough and, and jittery um, it's good to find just the basic shape and and just make sure none of that green is sh shining through if you lop off a little detail nobody's ever gonna notice it um, but if you have all these tiny little details that you're trying to capture exactly it's gonna be very hard to do it's gonna look very rough and jittery um, another thing that's useful to do is add uh, a little bit of blur or um, even Gaussian blur to this which is a more of an intense blur uh, there's also motion blur which is an option um, if you look on that curve tool there's a uh, roto tools menu which we just dropped down 
uh, which gives you some of those options. You see there, we've created a keyframe. A keyframe is just basically uh, going to store that though uh, those positions of those points on a particular frame now we're going to go to another frame in our animation uh, had this been an actual animation I all I have is a still frame but we are uh, showing that you can actually animate this curve and you can actually use that to uh, isolate say a person the person was walking you can isolate that even though he's walking or moving around and uh, that's just gem dem demonstrating right there that the the uh, the curve can actually be animated by keyframes uh, now we're going to go and uh, drop down this uh, extra tools here that has a uh, fill fill selection which will fill the selection for uh, the entire animation uh, we're also going to apply some Gaussian blurring to this I believe which will make it a, 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 look, a little better looking mat uh, in this particular case alright and you also have to make this a uh, alpha channel if you want to fill that selection which is uh, what we're going to select here. I'm sorry, this is, we're adding that Gaussian blur, and then we're going to make it into a uh, alpha selection. Which I guess we've already done. Okay. Um, and as you see, we're now we just filled the all the frames of that animation to uh, remove that ground. All right. We also have a uh, tool that help automate the process of rotoscoping. It's not perfect. It's, it gets confused if the shapes change too much. Say a, a person walking would be too much for it. But if you had a, a person that was like his head was uh, maybe moving back and forth a little bit, or if you had a, a solid shape uh, that you wanted to isolate, this would be a good way to do it. All right. I've zoomed back out to show the entire frame. And I'm going to uh, go into the uh, filter menu now, I believe. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to isolate there. <clears throat> Alright, I went to the swap screen. This is a grid that I have. The swap screen can uh, just basically think of it as drawing on the uh, back side of the paper. It can, it can have any image in it you want. It could be a background plate. It could be a, an animation. If you go into the uh, animation menu, there's a uh, option to make an animated swap screen by loading an AVI. So we could composite this man walking around on uh, another animation, say a city street or a, a field with waving grass if we wanted to. Anyways, so we've gone to the filter menu and we've selected composite with swap. And we're just showing the mask right here that we've created. We want to tweak this until we get it exactly how we need it. There's no garbage showing, and, and also our mat looks very clean. And there's no nothing showing through the, uh, the person here. Once we've got that tweaked, we also have the option to uh, um, add some uh, artificial uh, green removal. <laughs> which will uh, take out some of the green spill light. Uh, and correct for some of the uh, that extra green lighting that might have uh, bounced onto the character. As you see, this jumpsuit or this uh, this, this flight suit, whatever he's wearing, is uh, it was a little too green. We want it to be brown, but we don't want it to be too like red. We want it just to be a brown brown. So we're going to take it down about halfway. As you see there, and as you can see, the the sides are very the uh, the edges are very clean looking. They don't have a lot of green edges around them. So that's a pretty clean mat that we've created. There are a few things we forgot to remove. There are some, uh, I don't know if they're reflectors or uh, what they are, if they help the, uh, the animators uh, align their shots or uh, whatever those are in the background we forgot to remove, but we could have rotoscoped those out as well. And I've gone to the animation timeline, which is uh, under the animation menu or it's on the animation control panel uh, with a big button that says timeline. And we're gonna just select under the filters, we're going to select that composite with swap, and we're going to duplicate the settings that we had on that uh, panel we had open, the uh, the filter, the uh, composite with swap filter. They're the same settings, uh, you just have to duplicate uh, what we had before and hit the ap apply button, and there you have, we have applied that compositing with our entire animation. 
and that is basically how you perform both rotoscoping and compositing in PD Howler 9. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial. Um, there's a lot more that could be covered, but uh, out of time for now, so see you later. Thanks for watching.